Good morning. I'm Chaplain Clark from Three Lakes. It's good to be with you as we gather once again um, for our homily. I'm wearing my new Hands Caring Together shirt, which the staff will be wearing on the 19th of each month. And I got mine and more than happy to wear it today for the first time. This is a special weekend, expect for, especially for the fathers and men who are residents or staff members. It's Father's Day this weekend, and so whether you're a dad or you want to give thanks and remember your own fathers, this is a great weekend to do that. God bless you. In the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 26, we read a story of Jesus sending his disciples out. They're receiving instructions for him from him. It had to be an anxious time, and some of them had to be filled with fear. So here's what he tells them. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the Father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. One of the translations of these verses says, even the hairs of your head are numbered. I've teased one of my singing buddies that he doesn't, it doesn't take God very long to count the hairs on his head. But, and I have a bit more at this stage of my life, but he always has a comeback to me. God cares about each one of us, every one of us, cares deeply about us, how well known we are, and we are well known, and God cares deeply about us. One of the things I enjoy doing in our backyard is to feed the birds and have several varieties of feeders and seeds. What I've noticed is that certain birds enjoy different seeds, cardinals, blue jays, goldfinches, nuthatches. Only the blackbirds and the squirrels will eat anything and everything. But even the sparrows will come, which is such a common bird and so numerous that we hardly consider them a special bird, sometimes just a pest. But they come to eat, and they too are special. In the Psalms, we read of the sparrow finding a nesting place in the temple, and Jesus said, Not one of the sparrows will fall to the ground without your Father's will. Truly, as that simple, but the lyric hymn says, His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. In God's sight, the lowly sparrow reminds us that God cares deeply, personally for us. God is the God of the sparrow. God is the God of the skies. God of the weak and God of the strong. So why this emphasis from Jesus to those early disciples? Because he is sending them out into a world for the first time to share the good news. An experience like none other, and I suspect they had some doubts Doubts about what they would encounter as they told that story of God and Jesus. In a word, Jesus knew, and rightly so, they would be anxious. Actually, they would experience fear, in capital letters, fear. We know that experience of fear, that emotion which wells up inside of us when we encounter something new, something dangerous, perhaps for the first time. Fear can unnerve us. It's unsettling, to say the least. And Jesus, the realist, knew that our very nature, our very being, instinctively sends a signal when we feel vulnerable, even defenseless, and alone. For many of us, this pandemic, this coronavirus, which is still very much an issue, can threaten our health, our safety, and our life itself. And that's why all the actions and rules are so very important for us. Why our staff conscientiously practices diligently safety for you, protecting you, easing whatever fear might still, not, might still be felt, but it's lessened. Reminding us, all of us, of the depth of the love and care God has for us when we read in Romans 8, neither life nor death, nor things present, things to come, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think of your families today who are so grateful that you're protected, safe, getting wonderful loving care, yet because you are and they are unable to be with each other, they worry 
and feel deep concern for you. They see you in person through a window maybe, but able, not able to really be a personal presence to touch you, to hug you, even as you experience the same emotions and desires to be with them as well. That's part of the hard and challenging time we're going through at this time. And we want to ease any anxiety and fear that you have because fear can paralyze us. As people of God, we don't always have the luxury of avoiding all of our fears. And as followers of Jesus, we're not granted immunity from the challenges of living our lives. That's why, in part, we need each other in our journeys of faith. At the risk of sounding too simplistic, I want to offer some brief suggestions as we struggle with those thoughts that make us fearful. First, remind yourself that you are loved and important to God. One is to take those concerns and those fears to the Lord in prayer. Sometime each day, perhaps several times a day, offer a prayer to God. You don't need to be long or complicated. Simply say, Lord, you promised to be with me. Here's what's making me afraid today. Then tell God what it is. Then thank God for being there for you. And secondly, share with a friend, a staff person, someone that you trust, what makes you afraid and perhaps they will do the same for you and share in confidence, keeping it to yourself or ask to do a FaceTime with someone, myself included. And third, do a simple act of kindness for someone, a kind word, a simple gift, a reminder that God lives, loves them also. And take our minds off of ourselves and focus on the other person in, out of gratitude to God. There's a brief prayer. God, you love all creatures, great and small, even the sparrows, even me. Thank you, Lord. This is Chaplain Clark. You are loved.